if they keep waiting until time is captured and taken to court, those witnesses may all be dead and evidence may get lost. So if they could do it because it has taken too long. That's retired Ugandan Bishop Nelson Oronnonweng, who backs plans by the International Criminal Court to launch proceedings in absentia against Joseph Konyi, leader of the Rebel Lord Resistance Army. Also, representatives of major rebel groups are attending DRCP stocks for the first time. A court in Mozambique has begun delivering its judgment in a massive graft case involving government-backed loans. And Tunisia beat former colonial power France 1-0, but still was eliminated at the World Cup in Qatar. All this and more coming up on African News Tonight. The East African Community Bloc has opened new talks on peace in the Democratic Republic of Congo, with the representatives of major rebel groups attending for the first time. Kenya's peace envoy, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, urged all warring parties to give peace a chance and said foreign armed groups must be disbanded. Mohamed Yusuf reports from Nairobi. The DRC government, rebel groups, local representatives and civil society are gathered in Nairobi to find ways to end the chronic conflict in the east of the country that has killed hundreds of thousands and displaced millions. Speaking at the third inter-Congolese dialogue in Nairobi, former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta called on all parties to the conflict to open their minds to peace. We are here as part of the East African community to find a way and work with you to find peace, Kenyatta says, a peace that the Congolese have not seen for more than 20 years. Some children have never set foot in a classroom because of the conflict. And some men never got the opportunity to farm their land to bring themselves out of poverty because of conflict. Officials in the meeting say some 53 rubber groups have accepted a ceasefire, including the M23 rubber group. Kenyatta said foreign armed groups in the DRC must be disbanded and the sovereignty of the country respected. Forces from neighboring Burundi, Rwanda and Uganda are currently in eastern Congo, chasing after rebel groups they accuse of trying to destabilize their countries. The Kinshasa government has not been happy, especially with Rwanda, which it accuses of supporting M23, a claim denied by Kigali. M23 has been fighting fiercely with the Congolese army and claims to be protecting the Tutsi communities against the government and other rebel groups. Kenyatta said communities must accommodate each other to build a stable and peaceful nation. We have no choice but to live in peace with our neighbors and if we differ, it is your responsibility to make sure that you get a solution and call them to a peace talk so that you can build your village, towns, region and country together, Kenyatta says. The Congolese government said the peace talks are not about only the M23 rebel group but all other armed groups operating in the country. Saj Tshibangu is a special envoy to the DRC president. He says this is the last time the government is engaging in talks with the rebel groups. For those of you rebel groups who are here and have coalitions with other groups, pass this message to your friends. Shibangu says, you have been allowed by the DRC president and the East African community to be here and the whole of Africa is following this process. You still have time to join the peace process. We don't want to see our brothers who took up arms for whatever reason in the end to be killed by regional forces just because they didn't take advantage of the opportunity given to them, he says. There have been previous peace talks between the government and rebel groups, but all have failed to bring peace. The current talks are expected to end over the weekend. Mohamed Yusuf for VA News, Nairobi. Victims of the rebel Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda have been mixed reactions to plans by the International Criminal Court to launch proceedings in absentia against the group's fugitive leader, Joseph Kony. While some say the action against the leader of the bloody two-decade conflict in northern Uganda would be welcomed, others say it's pointless without Kony being brought to justice. Halima Athman reports from Kampala. 
Joseph Kony is the International Criminal Court's longest standing suspect at large. In 1987, he launched his rebellion against the ascent to power of President Yoram Seveni. After investigations into the Lord's Resistance Army rebellion opened in 2004, the ICC issued an arrest warrant against Kony in 2005. Kony is wanted on 33 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity. The allegations against him include murder, cruel treatment, enslavement, rape and attacks against the civilian population. Despite efforts by different nations, including the United States, to capture him, however, the rebel leader remains elusive. Last Thursday, Karim Khan, the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court, announced he had applied to launch hearings against Kony in the rebel leader's absence. Khan said the move will intensify efforts to find Kony. He noted that it will represent a meaningful milestone for victims who have waited patiently for justice for almost two decades. Retired Bishop Nelson Onono Onweng spoke with VOA about a May 19, 2004 raid in Lukodi village, which was then a camp for internally displaced people in the Gulu district of northern Uganda. Onweng lived in the camp and was a religious leader there. Bishop Onweng says on that fateful day, LRA rebels led by Dominic Onwen raided the village, leaving more than 60 people dead. 17 of the dead were close relatives of the bishop. Onwen is serving a 25-year prison sentence. The bishop said that as a victim, he and others will have confidence in the court if it can deliver justice, even in Connie's absence. If they keep waiting until Connie is captured and taken to court, those witnesses may all be dead and evidence may get lost. So if they could do it because it has taken too long. ICC prosecutor Khan argues that if the charges are confirmed in Connie's absence, a future trial following his arrest could move more quickly and effectively. Beatrice Akelo, a legislator from northern Uganda, says the move is not helpful if Connie is not heard. Who will be defending him after passing the judgment? How will they execute it? I don't want this thing of dilly-dallying. If people want to help us, let them come out and help us. But they should not pretend to be helping us when they are not. The Ugandan government has failed multiple times to capture Kony. Henry Oriem Okelo, Uganda's State Minister for Foreign Affairs, says the latest move will place Kony under pressure. This it will be a Kony out there in the in the bush who is now what found guilty, as opposed to Kony uh, who is at the bush there. Uh, who is not subjected to judgment of uh, guilty on the crimes of humanity. The LRA was responsible for the abduction of upwards of 60,000 people, including 20,000 children, many of whom were recruited as soldiers. The LRA also displaced close to 1.5 million people and killed an estimated 100,000 others. Connie's deadly operations were best in northern Uganda, Central African Republic, South Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Halima Othmani for VA News, Kampala, Uganda. A court in Mozambique has begun delivering its judgment in the case of 19 people accused of taking hundreds of millions of dollars in government-backed loans. Reuters says the accused include state security officials and the son of an ex-president. They face several charges, including money laundering and other crimes related to a $2 billion debt scandal that nearly collapsed the economy. In 2016, the government revealed the state-backed borrowing that it had not made public nor disclosed to parliament or donors. An independent audit a year later found that the government had not explained how $500 million borrowed from international banks for developing a tuna fishing fleet and other projects were spent. In response, the International Monetary Fund ended support, leading to debt default. Among those charged was former Finance Minister Manuel Chang and Ndambi Gwebuza, Gabuza, the son of former President Armando Gabuza. The judge in the case said it would take several days to read the 1,388-page ruling. You're listening to African News Tonight. I'm Douglas Impuga in Washington. For more information on these and other stories from the continent, 
Please see voaafrica.com. There you'll find all your favorite VOA radio and TV programs and a whole lot more. For world news, check out voanews.com. Nigeria's Imo state says it's working hard to reduce the spread of HIV AIDS. Oweri, the state capital, is, is the year-round hub of entertainment and tourism in southeast Nigeria, drawing visitors from home and abroad. The government says it's working with international bodies to conduct outreaches to identify people infected with AIDS and link them to treatment. Dr. Saxes Ohayagam, the IEMO Commissioner of Health, spoke with reporter Mike Imboni about World AIDS Day and effects and efforts to check the spread of the virus in the state. He says the best ways to prevent is to, is to practice abstinence, be faithful, and use condoms. As number one tourist center in southeast Nigeria, the most state government is poised towards um, making sure that the spread of HIV AIDS in the state is minimized a whole lot. We have, technic- we have um, technical implementing partners such as Caritas Nigeria. Um, they have given technical support to the national response at national and subnational levels, and by extension to most state and supported facilities. Um, we conduct outreaches, identifying positives and linking them to treatment. Um, HIV testing services at various testing points and supported facilities. Um, we do our best to do prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, ensuring that all positive women who register for antenatal are well linked to HIV-positive pregnant um, treatment. So these are most of the strategies we've been using. We also engage in risk communication and and um, make sure that people know the risk involved in HIV, especially amongst the the, the um, reproductive age group and school children. So these are some of the things we do. What is the prevalent rate of HIV AIDS in Nemo State? Has government been providing antiretroviral drugs to people living with AIDS? The prevalence of um, rate of HIV AIDS in the state um, is about 1.8% right now, which um, in the last meeting we had in Abuja, Imo State was celebrated as, as having achieved epidemic rates, and that is kudos to Imo State. We're doing our best to make sure that antiretroviral drugs get to people living with AIDS, get to facilities where they are needed, and we make sure through the support of the of the United States. Um, you see it. Um, we 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 get drugs. The state government have partnered with you see it, and the drugs are well distributed according to what they are supposed to be used for. As the world marks World is the one message you have for the youths on prevention or spread of the disease. Um, as we mark the World AIDS Day. To the youths and all emolites, I say, practice A, B, C. Abstinence, be faithful, use condoms. Try to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS. If you feel very funny with yourself and you're not sure, submit yourself for testing and make sure that you test Because when you get tested, you prevent the spread of HIV AIDS in Imo states and in Nigeria. Thank you so very much. I wish us all a happy celebration as we mark the World AIDS Day. That was Dr. Success Ohayaga, Imo State Commissioner of Health, speaking with reporter Mike Mboni by phone from Oweri, Nigeria. Spain says three Nigerian stowaways found on the radar of an oil tanker from the Canary Islands are asking for asylum. 
the Associated Press says Spain's Maritime Rescue Service picked up three men on Monday. Two of the three have been released from the hospital after being treated for hypothermia and dehydration. Under Spanish law, they must be returned to their point of departure, which is Lagos, unless they seek asylum. The human rights group called Walking Orders is asking the government not to return them to Nigeria and for their cases to be assessed individually. It's calling for the three to be placed into the government's humanitarian program for migrants. The three men arrived in Las Palmas on Monday following an 11-day voyage from Lagos. Reuters says French emergency services have rescued 240 asylum seekers trying to cross the English Channel to the UK. They range in age from 7 to 47 and include three Ethiopians, one Somali and an Egyptian. The UK says that 426 migrants were detected crossing the channel Monday. Yesterday, British authorities arrested a man. They say played a key role in the deaths of at least 27 people trying to cross into England on a dingy last November. The rescue this week is greeted in part to warming ties between France and the government of the UK's new Prime Minister, Rishi Shonak. And at the World Cup in Qatar, Tunisia beat France 1-0 and Denmark lost to Australia 1-0 in Group D.